There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world? I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio from a guy who's about literally 90 miles away from me. In Orlando, Dr. Ed Lee. Dr. Ed, what's going on, brother? How are you? I'm doing well. How's it going with you, Jay? It's good, man. So Dr. Ed and I know each other from way back at the medical conferences. He's been lecturing at AMMG, and I think you actually, you've you lectured at A4M in the past yep. too, correct? Yep. Yeah. Right. So so we we go way back. It's, this is a long time coming podcast. You know, he wrote one of the first books on peptides which I have back here. Actually, you know what? I don't have it back here because I literally, the one you just sent me, I gave to one of the guys that mentors me. I don't know where your other book, when I moved to Mexico, I think it's in my um, it's in my storage facility. Yeah, but grab it. Uh, but it's a great book. He wrote it a long time ago. It was, like I said, one of the first books on peptides. And, you know, he's an endocrinologist, board certified. Yep, there it is. Uh, best-selling author, of course, an international speaker. And he is also the co-founder of the Clinical Peptide Society, and he has also founded the non-for-profit organization, SavePeptides.org, which is a very necessary organization because, oh, and he also published the first study on BPC-157 in humans. Uh, and again, we just talked about his book. But um, this is a very relevant podcast today because, as Dr. Ed knows, most of the J. Campbell listening audience knows now, peptides are under attack uh, for many, many channels in the public sector now. Uh, as of September 29th, 2023, they put what, 28? Is it 28 or 22 peptides? 22 peptides. 22 peptides were placed in the quote unquote class two, which means known to be harmful or potentially causing harm or whatever. So now, obviously, the uh, compounders are a little bit quote unquote under the gun from a standpoint of like, hey, you're not supposed to be compounding these, and A, clinicians are not supposed to be. Uh, scripting them from you so i mean it's a it's a really weird and you know i like to use the word nebulous situation because as i was telling ed off air if you speak to a compound pharmacy owner a lot of them are basically saying like oh well well they're gonna have to shut me down because this is a, most of my operating capital and i've invested blank into the my you know into the supply chain to purchase all these peptides but as you know ed was telling me he's like well if the fda wants to send them a letter of cease and desist and say if you don't you we're going to shut you down they have that ability too. So I think this is a really good, you know, time to talk about it because again, you're an expert in the field and obviously you founded the nonprofit organization, but um, most, my, my audience is educated. So we're going to go really, you know, all over the place here today, but from a standpoint of like somebody who's new to the J Campbell audience, and there are, can you tell them what a peptide is? Sure. A peptide is a small little protein made of amino acids. Um, and we have, uh, Probably 250,000 peptides in our own body. We only understand a fraction of them. But uh, some of these peptides are hormones, uh, neurotransmitters. Uh, they're simply molecules. So what I tell my patient is that um, it's like a, a peptide rings a doorbell in your front door and a response happens, whether the dog comes or you come. But uh, if, you're, if you want to look prettier or have better skin, you can use a peptide to turn on your fibroblast cells to make more collagen. So uh, there's many different peptides that do many different things. So uh, my kids are so tired of me talking about peptides. They say, <laughs> blah, 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 pecto bismuth. <laughs> your kids should be using peptides. I literally just had a, core, a, a person, a, a very influential person reach out to me this morning via WhatsApp. You know, you get those random WhatsApp messages and they were like, you need to do this. And it was like, like all these bullet points of stuff, like creating a course for kids and teaching children, like, you know, how to uh, be, to avoid, you know, becoming hormonally deficient and, 
you know, what they can use in their late teens and how they can avoid EMFs, all this crazy stuff. And I literally wrote back to the person. I was like, and who's going to pay for that? The kid or you? <laughs> right. Because who's going to, the kids aren't going to pay for their courses. The adults will. And then it just ends right there because then they give it to the kid and they're like, I expect a kid to do that. But anyway, um, regarding peptides, um, it still blows my, blows me away. Ed, I did a podcast earlier today with Chris Burris. He's the founder of uh, SCS Research and also the guy that just put the longevity conference together. And he knows everything there is to know about peptides, but he still hasn't used them. He's literally asking me about BPC. Oh you know, oh, I've really been waiting for this podcast just so I could ask you about that. Like, is it safe? And I'm like, dude, I've been using BPC since 2009. Like anybody with a soft tissue injury sprain, strain, it should be like, you know, number one. But it's it's really mind blowing that they're still for the most part, you know, outside of the circles that you and I are in, like there's a lack of awareness about the efficacy of peptides. Well, peptides are, are truly amazing. Um, every day that I eat peptides, I'm just, it blows my mind away. Yeah, I could save someone's uh, not undergoing a total shoulder replacement or hip replacement. For sure. Uh, with some of my patients, unfortunately, it's so far gone that they do need surgery. Sure. But what a funny little story was, I gave a talk uh, through Mark Gordon uh, class on traumatic brain injuries. Sure. Uh, peptides can help the brain. I, well, a little, I'm a little ADD, so I kind of went to the a little off tangent. I was say, talking about how it can help with orthopedic issues and obviously the brain. One orthopedic surgeon retired from the Air Force, um, and he got up, put his finger at my face, and said, damn you, you're going to kill the orthopedic surgeons. I was like, Good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Go yeah, speak of some interaction. <laughs> right. No yeah. doubt. That's awesome. It's funny. Well, I look. I look. Or what the dude, I talk about this, Ed, I talk about this all the time. I, you know, you and I have not had this conversation, but like, it's actually a crisis of conscience now if you're an orthopede and you're working with a patient who's, say, 45 or older, you know, on an ACL reconstruction or a PCL reconstruction or any of those things, and whether or not you tell them, you write them a script for TB500 and BPC, or you order a $60,000 plus procedure, which you know, good in good conscience, may not be effective at their age. Exactly. exactly. And no one wants to talk about this. And thankfully, there are orthopedes that are going the peptide channel route now. But yeah, man, I mean, the, the entire allopathic medical profession, especially from a surgery standpoint, is built on a quote unquote standard of care model. You know, and it usually requires very expensive procedures. And it's like peptides is like this great equalizer because you and I both know that it doesn't cost that much. Exactly. And it's natural and it does all the wonderful things, especially with tish, soft tissue damage, nerve damage, uh, ligament repairs, tendon repair, micro, you know, the micro tears in the muscles. Um, all day long, I see a lot of my patients, all different types of ability. I mean, whether they're a professional athlete or not professional, uh, it gives back their life. To, to, to be fair, because you and I are peptide homers, do, you know, because the people are going to ask us, but Jay, I mean, like, you know, I talked to my dad about these kind of things and he'd be like, he'll never inject anything into himself. He'll never have a physician inject anything into himself. They're scared shitless. But, you know, are there, do you notice ever when these things are administered correctly, do you ever notice really any side effects? The only peptides that I've noticed some, some side effects is at the injection sites. Uh, there are two, there, the growth hormone peptides, you can, t uh, you can get a later allergic reaction to it. And usually if you're allergic to one of them, you're going to be allergic to like you know, CJC. Right. Be allergic then eventually to test some more. Like, but uh, the one that I'm a little concerned is the MOC C because I had one person with an anaphylactic reaction. Oh, wow. She was, she was, she's young. She was like, she's like 24 years old and she knew something was wrong. So she ran outside because she was by herself. She bumped into her neighbor, said, call 911 and collapsed in front of her neighbor. And if it wasn't for the neighbor calling 911. Wow. So. Was that, was that a, a compounded preparation of Motsi or research? Uh, compounding one. Um, yeah. From a 503 pharmacy. But wow. She, or the science, she continued to get wealth that got bigger, bigger, bigger. 
And she, she even after that crisis, she goes, can I use it again? I go, no. She, she, <laughs> she loved me. She, she knows. Me. Yeah. She felt crazy. She loved me. She yeah. Wait, this rash, this wealth is as big as like, you know, a basketball. But it's like, hey, if it gets bigger than a fist. Yeah, that's hilarious. I mean, I, I mean, that's an interesting story. I mean, I've been using peptides since literally 2005, 2006. I started using Ipamorelin back then. And I've never, other than what you said, like slight irritation at the injection site, you know, red bumps, cellulitis type air, you know, not right. cellulitis. What's it called? What's the, what's the term for when you get red bumps at the injection site? Erythematous uh, reaction. Yeah, an erythematous reaction. Other than that, I've noticed nothing. Now, you did say CJC. CJC and some of the GH agonist, you know, peptides can cause a flushing. Right. You know what I mean? Sense, like a like a niacin flush. Not to everyone, but some people. And then, you know, um, the melanic uh receptors, the, the M1s and the M2s, M2 for me makes me nauseous. I literally cannot use M2, even at a very super low micro dosage. Whereas melanotan one is amazing. You know, I expand, I feel like I exp expand my consciousness. It keeps my skin at a different shade. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I don't know any other side effects from peptides. Again, that woman, she's probably an outlier. There are possible, you know, histamine responses and, you know, in a serious case of anaphylaxis, but for the most part, they're relatively harmless. Um, other than just, I think the biggest side effect is ignorance that people don't understand that they're out there. Yeah, we just, uh, I just vapored to be published because the FDA uh, listed these 22 peptides and uh, yeah. they're basically saying that there's no safety data on these peptides. So I said, all right, let, let, I want to write you an update paper on all the studies, including the COVID study on Ibis and Apple 1. Sure. So, uh, we categorized, it was Dr. Elliot Dunst and myself, and uh, anyway, we we basically have there's uh, over seven thousand patients in clinical trials with thymus and alpha one, and it's all been safe. And all the reports say that you know just maybe a little skin irritation was the most common side. Right, effect. very well tolerated, but it was beneficial for um, uh, generally for most of the studies. Uh, so, thymus and alpha one is FDA approved, right? It is FDA approved, correct? Uh, Thymus and alpha one was an orphan drug. Never a uh, was never given uh, basically a, a, a true FDA approval uh, in the U.S. It is basically FDA approved in like over thirty five countries in the U.S. with <laughs> thymus and alpha one, but not in the U.S. It was studied in the U.S. multiple times. In yeah, is uh, when hepatitis B and C was yeah. Really but uh, and they used it in children with uh, with children born without thymus gland. So, and it was life saving. So, the whole idea of thymus alpha one not being safe is bullshit. So it's yeah. I can't wait for this paper to be published. It'll be open access and uh, everyone can see it. So, it's like, anyway. Well, it's well, the true story. Uh, and I, I'm very open and outspoken about this. I take my thymus and alpha one with me everywhere I go when I travel. I have a, yeah, I have an insulin cooler bag and I have my, either grow, a, a pen of growth hormone or I have uh, BPC and TB500 in a vial and I have my thymus and alpha one. I go everywhere. I mean, why would I, if you're knowledgeable about these things, why would you ever leave home without it? Well, funny thing was I was in Houston. I gave a whole day talk teaching a hundred doctors on peptides. And I had all of a sudden after that, all those talks, everyone came by who hadn't seen me patting my shoulder. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it somehow, I, so after a while, it just basically, I got a labrum tear. And that night, I was in so much pain. I could not sleep on that bed. So I was like crying. It's like, I know I need peptides, but I don't have any. Right. But uh, anyway, it's all taken care of. So Awesome. All right. So let's talk about, you just mentioned the 22 peptides that the FDA essentially has banned. Now, I want to be clear. They haven't actually enacted legislation to ban them, but they've placed them on the Section 2 or Classification 2 list, which, again, depending on what attorney you talk to or what compound pharmacy owner, you know, everybody has their own interpretation. But I want your opinion as an expert in the field. What does this really mean 
for the future of those peptides because, Ed, as you know, those are the peptides that most people who are familiar with peptides, which is actually a growing percentage of people now, uh, are using or have experience using. It's dangerous because if the FDA gets what they want, and I honestly, I mean, I've heard different theories about why they're doing it, but uh, I mean, you could say it's big pharma that's you know pushing this, but. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly who's pushing it, but uh, if the FDA gets what it, if they, if they achieve what they want, then it's going to be visible. But I'm glad that uh, um, Dan Danui, he's uh, with Pharmaceo, and uh, I just talked to him by text today, and it says that the lawsuit against the FDA will go out end of this week or next week, early next week. So hopefully the week will be out there, and he has basically three things that they're saying. Number one is there's over a million people on peptides. You can't right. stop it because right. a lot of people, there's no other alternatives. Right. Uh, number two is uh, I helped Dan collect data and there is over, um, believe it or not, $300 million uh, loss in the U.S. economy, which is huge. And I'm not a lawyer, but the, if it's over a hundred million, then they, they take it to a different um I guess court system or, or, or maybe go to the Senate. I have no idea because yeah. it, this is huge. It's, it's yeah. not just a minor little thing. And um, so, and just for me, but to be clear on that, that means that if you uh, control them, that's 300 million that isn't being spent on those purchases. Correct. Exactly. Yep. Got it. Yep. And then what's number three? You no, know, I knew you were going to. I can't remember what <laughs> There's so much going through our heads at all times and hours. I, I find myself talking to people and I'm literally in midstream, like, what the fuck was I going to say? <laughs> so, uh, I didn't see I, I interrupted you and killed your stream. Yeah. I'll come back. But, uh, anyway, but we can save peptides. That's the cool thing, Jay. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you know about this, but, uh, there's a guy named Terry Myers from Brooksville Compounding Pharmacy, very close to where you're at. I know Terry. Yeah, I know Terry. He uh, had dinner uh, with DeSantis, and uh, he was a group of, I think, eight people. And uh, eventually, DeSantis's group will contact him, and he has to make a donation. Uh, once he makes a donation, he'll sit down with DeSantis. What? <laughs> So that's how government works. Yes, it works that way. But the other thing is that he has a Surgeon General of the Sanctus, that's Dr. Joseph Latipo. And as you know, he saved Florida from not closing down from COVID. And he also he just outrolled the vaccine. Yes, I just got that notification yesterday. Yeah, he's against uh, uh, the FDA re uh, recommendations against the current boosters. Yeah. Uh, and his wife... Apparently sees this doctor in Tampa, and she loves peptides. There you go. And he says, I will basically help you if you get more signatures. That's why I'm on your podcast. So you, awesome. You guys can spread the word because we're up to 5,951 signatures. I, he never said how many signatures, but I imagine 30,000 or more. And uh, I, I only can shout on top of the mountain yeah. uh, so many times. Well, it's weird because like I, I've already gone out and done that and I will continue to do that. Um, I would think you'd have more people signing it. Just, I mean, at the end of the day, doc, it's like people are just so lazy at this point. Like you send out an email with a broken link and instead of like them clicking on your website and finding it, they have to refund. They, they'll reply and say, your link's broken, bro. Send me a new link. I mean, I mean, it's, it, I mean, people won't even fill out a thing. But I believe me, I will be very vigilant about this uh, and and go, you know, out to the masses. Obviously, in addition to the podcast, but just to talk about this. But um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, we're, we find ourselves in a very interesting time. Um, it's it's interesting to to see what will happen. That's actually really good news, though, that that lawsuit is going out next week. So I guess we'll find out within the next month or two. I mean, well, that's the other question for you though, is like, let's say they do decide to shut down the compounders and they send the, the cease and desist letters. How long is that going to take? I don't know exactly how long that's going to take, but I think with this injunction uh, with the FDA, I think yeah. this time. 
So I'm, I, I like to look at the glass being uh, half full. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Let's focus on that. The, it depends on the judge who's going to look at this lawsuit. It's going to be um, anyway filed, I think, in Virginia, state of Virginia. Uh, and the lawyer that's been hired, he has beat the FDA eight times. Yeah. 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 So this is it's not like a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm a biggest pro pro peptides person on the planet. So, I mean, like, you don't have to, you know, convince me. And honestly, I think most of the influencers in the fitness community now that have experience with peptides are all the same. I mean, I don't see anybody, you know, who's anti peptide. I mean, yeah, there are certain people out there that are, you know, anti medicine. Sure. That may be, but for the average person, and I speak to all these people, you know, Ben Greenfield, Mark Sisson, you know, Dave Asprey, you know, people that are, you know, influential people in our space. I mean, they all use peptides. They don't want peptides to go away. You know, they, the last thing is, you know, and we could talk about this, you know, if you feel comfortable, the last thing that we really want is having physicians go the research chemical route because they're already doing it, but we don't need that, right? Like we want to have legitimate supply chains, again, compounding pharmacies being able to a manufacture and then b you know, send them to prescribing physicians. Like, but, but as you know, and again, Rick Collins talks about this. If you really do outlaw compounding pharmacies from having peptides, it's not like, it's, it's like they said, you know, in number one, over 1 million people are using them. The genie is out of the bottle. Like, how are you going to stop human beings from using quote unquote products that are highly effective again, safe and effective, you know, uh, from because you say, oh no, you can't use them, and we're going to block up the supply chain, right? Because as you always know, dude, whatever there's a will, there's a way, and when there's a demand, there's a supply. That's the world. That's how the world works. So it, you know, you can't. I, I like the, and then again, you and I haven't talked in a while, but I like to say that peptides represent crypto. They are the crypto of medicine. They are literally like a giant diversified, totally uncentralized form of healing. And how are you going to regulate that like you did in the past with like allopathic, you know, petroleum distillate medications that big pharma serves? I don't think you can. I love that analogy. Uh, I tried this crypto because it is wild, wild west. I mean, yeah. I mean, some of the perfect claws that uh, are uh, anyway, been written, uh, Anyway, some of them, basically, I derived it because I figured this is the best dose. But anyway, it's, uh, I mean, it's there to be tweaked. So right, uh, it's not supposed to be written in you know stone. So uh, everyone's different. Uh, everyone's uh, <clears throat> anyway. The effect, effect is effect is. I mean, for it to be effective, um, depends on the dosing and the timing. So, Did, I mean, I mean. Did you want to talk about any of like your favorite peptides or maybe even just like research, you know, on new stuff that's on the horizon that, you know, it really hasn't found its way into the quote unquote mainstream. And again, the mainstream is a relative term for the peptides using world. Well, one thing that I'm really excited about Jay is that uh, I'm writing a paper on a case study on a, uh, one of my patients who came to see me because of carpet decline, and uh, he would stop halfway during our, conversation and forget what it was at. Sure. And uh, anyway, uh, so we did a um, cognitive uh, CNS vital test and he basically sc scored everything on the red. Uh, nothing. It was like really bad. Um, and, uh, but the good news is we, he's undergone um, therapeutic plasma exchange therapy uh, with also using some peptides like epidatwid with a mesocarmic stem cells and exosomes. And uh, there's a study uh, by, uh, anyway, the, anyway, there's a study that's out there that sh shows that if you use epidatwid with mesocarmic stem cells, it can help develop new neurons uh, because they you need that combination to help basically develop new brain cells. So um, in about nine months, We've done also the biological age, and he got, in nine months, reduced his age almost by eight years. Wow. His telomeres increased almost by 0.2 kilobases, which is wide. And his uh, cognitive uh, 
is like, he's like, Ed, I'm back in the game. I goes, because he was a stockbroker and he goes, I was too afraid to do anything. He goes, I got to make money to afford this. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's it's all some joy. Well, yeah. So, you know, I love that the, the that we know the body can repair stuff, but the brain has been always a mystery to me. So, anyway, so I'm busy writing that paper up. What peptides are you using specifically for the brain? Well, he was using CMAX. Uh, he was using it religiously. And then also we were using epithalin. This is yeah, yeah, you said epithalin, yeah. yeah. What What are your thoughts on cerebral and Before you answer, I mean, man, I love that, runs the, that runs the gamut because it's pig, you know, poor scene quality or whatever. You, you hear all the things. But, I mean, man, there's there's some very wealthy people out there that, you know, Will be will remain unnamed on this podcast. Who run very high dosages of um, cerebral eyes and, and see like reversal in neurodegenerative disease. Yes, um, I I reversed uh, someone's Alzheimer's with using cerebral eyes, and, and I had five days to fix her dementia. She came from um, Brazil, and her whole family traveled. Her wow. son in Orlando. And says, hey, I'm going to have my mom for five days, see what you can do. So I did some baseline blood work. She was in the 70s. She just couldn't remember what she ate the night before. She was really emotional, just was not a nice person, just irritable. So I put her on an estrogen patch, some progesterone, vitamin D. And I um, said, let's do cerebral license. So she got that IV every day. And every day... They noticed her mom was getting better. Better, and then when she she went back to Brazil, her family, uh, her son bought three months supply, and every three months we go back to Brazil to get this. So instead of doing IV, they did IM injections, and uh, she basically just like reversed her dementia. For two years, she had great her memory back to normal, and she wanted to record something in English, like "Thank you, Dr. Lee," but. English was not her first language, so it didn't. Yeah, matter. but anyway, um, anyway, her unfortunately, her son got in a lawsuit, divorce, lost a lot of money, couldn't afford it, and then anyway, uh, so her mom then she passed away. But they keep they keep thanking me. Thank you for uh, giving mom you know, back for at least two years. Um, is is, cere- is cerebral? It's a great story. Is cerebral lies in your favorite? Uh, nootropic or neuroprotective peptide? I would say um, for that answer, yes, it is better than than dihexa. Yes, because they see more benefit with that than dihexa. Uh, so, yes. What I, when I did it myself, I actually, my experience, Jay, I don't know with your experience, but I got an IBM infusion of it just to see what it's like. Sure. So you should try it. So I did the IV, and it felt like the hamster running in in my brain also started running faster. Faster, yeah. Like, oh, wow, this feels good. So now I just do IM shots like twice a week. That's awesome. Um, so I I have never used cerebralize, and um, and I've been very vocal and outspoken about my usage of nootropic peptides. The only one that I feel anything with, and it's a really heroic dose, is dihexa. And that's like a 60 milligrams, you know, which some people feel like amazing brain, you know, acuity or mental acuity enhancement at four to six milligrams. I'm like, what, what? Like, you don't must not have a supercomputer in your head, you know, but I mean, we're all, that's the thing. We're all different, right? We all are biochemically unique and out of one when we respond to these various peptides, but like I, and again, I know we're all different, but for me, I used to, and I don't anymore because of Tessa fencing, but I, you, I, I used to compare nootropic peptides to how I felt subjectively to modafinil, right? Which, you know, is a focusing agent, whatever the hell it is. And I just never got anything from any of the nootropic peptides, slang, C-Max, Dihexa, you know, the, the, there's other ones um, compared to modafinil. And then I don't use modafinil anymore at all because I use tesofensi. Now, I don't want to like go off the the deep end here, a rabbit hole too much, but like I found the tesofensine massively stimulates BDNF for me. And I am like super motivated. I can take a very low dose, 250 micrograms in the morning and I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? Like not, I'm not a coffee drinker. I never have been a a coffee drinker. I I occasionally will drink caffeine. I use like the Mio 
you know, I put it in my water, you know, like I, right now, like I'm fasting and I do, I'll do a 24 hour fast today and I'm using like ketone, you know, keto light, you know, like an electrolyte salt replenishment water. Um, but if I want, I'll throw a little bit of cat, you know, if I get run down by five 30 and I got shit to do at night or whatever, I may throw a little bit of caffeine in there, but, uh, man, I'm, I love Tessa Fencing. Have you used Tessa Fencing? Uh, I have not used that one, but I'm similar to you. I've never drank, uh, well, coffee. I really don't take caffeine, but yeah, you have tons of energy. So it's yeah. like, I do have a little caffeine and an energy gel, like on the bicycle. Sure. Like, yeah. But I mean, are you familiar with Tessa Fencing? Have you ever scripted that to any of your patients? I've had several patients request it, so I've used, I, I, I've prescribed it. I haven't used it a lot, so not much. Yeah, I mean, I you know, Dr. Rob is obviously a good friend of yours and a good friend of mine, and so I mean, you know, he he really likes that product too. But I mean, I just started using that product at the end of 2021, and it's like now my nootropic of choice. You know what I mean? Like I I, I literally use at least 20 days out of the month. The, the one thing about that product that I love is that it doesn't create any kind of receptor attenuation and you also don't get any kind of addiction to it. You can completely stop taking it and have no issues. And it's, it's weird. And I know every, again, everybody else is different. There's other people that take it and you know, they've been on SSRIs previously and then we're weaned off of SSRIs and it, it like reactivates some sort of signaling that was probably deactivated from the SSRIs and they get like to a point where they're like, I love this thing, but I'm laying in bed at night, staring at my ceiling. I can't sleep, but I don't know. It's, it's definitely, um, it's a small molecule. Obviously it's not really a peptide, but it, you know, the research is very strong on it. Uh, and as you know, it also has the latent effect of being a mild thermogenic so it also enhances body fat loss which is a you know a nice little benefit for people that out there who are quote unquote insulin resistant and holding on to too much visceral body fat but uh, anyway that's like my favorite you know it's not a nootropic but like when people ask me like what do you notice more i like i notice that more than i notice any of the other um nootropic peptides cool do you do you like injectable um nootropic peptides versus you know because they do have nasal mists of some of them too like do you have, do you like any one before the other well for cmax it's you like uh, i've always intranasal yeah uh, and it's just easier to get it's just that it's in the refrigerator sometimes it's out of sight out of mind so and it has a short expiration date uh in regards to dihexate you take an oral uh, and uh, regards to uh cerebral lysin it's uh you have to inject so whether I am or IV, but uh, yeah. I, I'm becoming more of a fan of cerebral lysin because I've seen more and more of my patients with better results with cerebral lysin. Because so, that's the biggest concern in my practice is I would rather die or heart attack than have to mention. Yeah, man, exactly. I mean, I mean, demand and, and, you know, for people, and again, my audience is expre- incredibly sophisticated because we talk about this kind of stuff all the time, but I mean, dementia is really just type three diabetes. You know, I mean, it's the same neurological dysfunction, you know, that comes from having too much body fat, insulin resistance, and that ultimately it leads to neuroinflammation. And you're right, man, like nothing is a worse, I mean, really nothing is a worse diagnosis than even even having type two diabetes, because it just shows that you can't control what you eat and you also don't exercise. And that's the biggest problem in today's society is people are, they're so, you know, had their, there's an app for that. Can, you know, can, can I get my... On the app, you you and I have to walk there. You know, I went to A four N this past uh, December, and I my son dropped me off at the airport, and I said, "Did you see my phone?" He goes, "No." So we checked the car, and it's like they're already my flight is already starting. You know, to start to board to board, and it's like I have no chance to go back get my phone. So you know what. I, I went old school. I, I had to get the paper ticket. Uh, I had to stay in line to get the paper ticket. I had to beg everyone to go in front of everyone for the TSA. Right. And I, I was I mean, able to make it, but uh, I borrowed people's phones. I had to borrow people, like, people next to me. So dude, that's awesome. I'm surprised I didn't run into you at A4M. But, dude, I mean, I literally, that's what I was talking. I, I had a, a literally a Hollywood celebrity on my podcast earlier this morning, and, I, and I'm not throwing that out to say I'm cool. I literally was friends with this guy before he became a celebrity. Right. So it's like, we kind of have jokes about it, but anyway, I, I talked to him today 
and we were talking about what life was like before phones. Right. And I have my friends like, oh, you should try it for three days. It's actually obliterating. It's absolutely the most amazing thing. If if every person went 30 days, and I would say it's going to be a lot better if you're doing it with other family members or loved ones. Right. Right. Because you can't like be by yourself and then they're using their phones. But everybody without a phone for 30 days, it's life altering. It's literally life altering. We're so enslaved by these devices. You know, my wife and I call it screen facing. You know what I mean? I mean, it's yeah, it's uh, training. Uh, it's like, you know, zombies. Work, work zombies, dude. It's just like, they're all at the... It's literally 100%. It's 100% zombies. Our children don't read anything. They don't really learn anything. Well, they learn what the screen tells them. And then you and I both know the screen lies to them. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I have two college kids. Like, we went on a cruise. And uh, I got them to read one book each. So I'm... Woo-hoo! I do. I had to give them money. <laughs> Dude, it's on. Yeah, yeah, well, they're, they're yeah, over 18. Uh, well, uh, so they, on the casino, they can gamble. So they needed money. <laughs> Did you, um, were you? Yeah, not, well, I'll give you money. Are they going into, are they going into the medical profession or are you keeping them out? Uh, whatever I say, they do opposite. Yeah. I don't think they want to go to medicine. It's not that I had a terrible life. Like I was like, yeah, I thought I had a decent way to show that hey, this is a great field. But if they want to go to medicine, it's fine. But one's going to uh, into finance, other one wants to go into uh, probably art and uh, he's born an artist. So we'll see. Yeah, but I mean, at least you got him into college. I mean, my so my two daughters are sixteen, well, almost sixteen. One's fifteen, but in three weeks she'll be sixteen, and the other one just turned fourteen. And I, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. they're, they're, they come fast. They're, 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 they're getting good leadership, but as far as like, you know, is that what they're really, what they want to do? I'm a laissez-faire parent. I don't push them, but it, it's interesting, you know, along with what you just said, because the way they learn today is so different than the way you and I learned, you know, we had to go over read books, you know, we had to go to the library, the Dewey decimal system. We had to pull out the card, you know, file. I mean, you know, it's just, it's crazy to think about. I mean, dude, we didn't even have computers when we went to college. Well, anyway, it was good old days. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a different world, and you you're trying to explain it to our children, and it's like they don't they look at you like you're an alien, you know they 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 don't understand. But you're right, it is it's a different day and age. All right, well, I I appreciate you coming on the podcast today. Um, so for all of you guys out there, uh. This is going to run pretty soon, but uh, please, if you haven't already, I mean, I know I've encouraged a lot of you to do this, but please go to savepeptides.org and sign the petition. Make your voice be heard. As he said earlier in the podcast, they only have six or 7,000 people on there and they need about 30,000, or at least that's what Ed believes. Um, so obviously do your part, you know, of the 34,000 people that are subscribed to my YouTube channel, I mean, probably half of them are bots, but if we can just get a court <laughs> If we get just a quarter of that 16,000 real humans to actually get there, then we will be a much closer uh, to getting to that number. But Ed, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today, brother. Hey, thanks, Jay. Be well. Of course. Okay, guys and gals. So again, go to savepeptides.org and support the amazing individuals that do come on the podcast. You can also buy his book, which is found on Amazon. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.